Dr. Jennifer Wiseman is an astronomer, author, and speaker. Currently, she's the senior project scientist on the Hubble Space Telescope and previously served as chief of the Laboratory for Exoplanets and Stellar Astrophysics at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. We asked her how her interest in astronomy began. I was always interested in space, even as a child, and I think it's because I love nature. So I grew up on a farm in the state of Arkansas, which is in the middle part of the United States. And when the evening would come, my parents and I would go for walks on the country lane. And because there weren't any city lights nearby, we could actually see stars from horizon to horizon. That's a wonderful experience. And sadly, many people today don't get that experience because they live near cities and towns where there's too much light pollution, as we call it. But if you can get out where it's really dark and see the sky, you realize that we're part of this marvelous uh, universe where you know half the your vision is covered with stars and and the other half you see uh, or at least I could see trees and grass and meadows uh, I love animals as well so I think my love is, of nature inspired me at first to be interested in space and then as I was growing up I began to you know watch television programs where we were learning about what's actually out there these these probes that we sent to other planets this is back in the 1970s we're sending back images uh, from the planets in our solar system and the moons around them. I was fascinated by this and, and I thought sending something out that could send us back images of outer space was one of the neatest things that humans could do and I still think that's the case. Here at the world famous Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Owen Gingerich is Professor Emeritus of Astronomy and the History of Science at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. He's been an astronomer for more than 60 years. He's also a leading historian of science, with a particular interest in the famous 16th century astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. We asked him how this interest came about. When I was a young teenager, just after World War II, I had the opportunity uh, to uh, cross the Atlantic as a seagoing cowboy. My father was interested in this proposition. None of us had much of an opportunity to travel during those war years, and here was a wonderful adventure. So he took the physical examination and became a, an UNRWA, that's for United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Agency, uh, uh, to be a supervisor of a group of 32 cowboys in taking horses to war-torn Europe and our destination turned out to be Poland. Years later, I told a young Polish astronomer who was getting interested in the history at one of the international meetings that we were both attending, I told him how I had visited his country in such a terrible, war-torn state. Uh, it was unimaginable uh, to a young teenager who had been uh, living a sheltered existence in the American Midwest during the war, uh, to see the rubble, uh, the uh, total disorganization, the, uh, the black marketeering, the prostitution, all of those things. Anyway, my friend said, well, I should revisit his country because there was going to be an international history of uh, science meeting there. And so I accepted that invitation. I went over. I discovered that the Polish uh, historians of science were very excitedly looking forward to 1973, which was the 500th year of the birth of Nicholas Copernicus, the astronomer who f proposed that the sun was fixed in the center of a planetary system and not the Earth. Also here at Harvard, Gerald Gabriels is the Leverett Professor of Physics. We asked him to describe his research. I have a number of research interests. Um, I lead a team of uh, an international team that works in Geneva, Switzerland at the CERN facility. We make anti-hydrogen atoms. In fact, in just a little while, I'll be having and leading an international video meeting uh, of all of my collaborators. 
We're hoping there to um, study the properties of antihydrogen atoms and compare them precisely to those of hydrogen atoms. Uh, here at Harvard, um, I have uh, groups of students that I work with. Um, we're trying to measure the electron magnetic moment, the, si the little magnet that's hiding inside of every electron. We've measured that more accurately than uh, anyone else. We've measured the fine structure constant more accurately than anyone else has been able to do. So basically there's other projects too, but the basic idea is to study uh, physics at its most fundamental level using methods that are accessible to relatively small teams of people, generally a professor and several students. Dr. Peter Bussey is a physicist at Glasgow University in the UK. We asked him to explain what he does. I'm a physicist and I work in experimental elementary particle physics. I've retired from teaching students at Glasgow University, so now I can spend a bigger fraction of my time on doing research on the experiments that I'm involved with. And there are, in fact, three of these. Uh, we are finishing off analysing some data on proton-photon uh, interactions at the DAISY laboratory, which is at Hamburg in, Glas in Hamburg. And I'm also involved with an experiment at the Fermilab laboratory near Chicago, and also for the longer term future on the LHC at CERN in Geneva. Today, Dr. Nick Saunders works here in central London as a lawyer. Before that, he studied theology. And before that, he designed some of the detectors used on the Large Hadron Collider. So what lay behind your change from being a physicist to studying theology? Uh, well, I started getting interested in theology because I was a um, practicing Christian. And um, I've always been interested in metaphysical issues. And one of the things which I learned from doing physics was that um, a lot of physics is really about similar metaphysical issues. You, often in physics you have competing theories, which um, some of which may be, um, may be to explain experimentally a set of results equally well. But um, what, um, what, what enables scientists to decide whether one set of theories is better than another is the application of, of these um, metaphysical or, or, or more general principles. And, and it's very interesting to see how those impact physics and impact how physics is developed. And so moving to more general metaphysics, looking at theology and philosophical theology was actually, in a way, not such a large step as, as it might seem.